firm foundation, the sure way. It is upon the rock of our Redeemer, who is Christ, the Son of God, that every one of us, young or old alike, must build. Why? To what end? That when the devil shall send forth his mighty winds, yea, his shafts in the whirlwind, yea, when all his hail and his mighty storm shall beat upon you and your students and your society and your own hopes and dreams, he, the devil, shall have no power over you, no power to drag you down to the gulf of misery and endless woe because of the rock upon which you are built, which is a sure foundation, a foundation whereon if men build, they cannot fall. That strength, brothers and sisters, undergirds our position on every question of doctrine, history, or church practice that can and often does arise as the work unfolds. You've heard these questions. They're not new. They first arose in the neighborhood of Palmyra when the 14-year-old Joseph first reported his heavenly vision, and they continue in one form or another to the present day. Not all gospel questions have answers yet, but they will, and they'll come. In the meantime, I have a question. What conceivable historical or doctrinal or procedural issue that may arise among any group could ever overshadow or negate one's consuming spiritual conviction regarding the Father's merciful plan of salvation, His only begotten Son's birth, mission, atonement, and resurrection, the reality of the first vision, the restoration of the priesthood, the receipt of divine revelation both personally and institutionally, the soul-shaping spirit and moving power of the Book of Mormon, the awe and majesty of the temple endowment, one's own personal experience with true miracles, and on and on and on. It is a mystery to me. Talk about a question. It is a mystery to me how those majestic eternal first-level truths so central to the grandeur of the whole gospel message can be set aside or completely dismissed by some in favor of obsessing over second or third or fourth level pieces of that whole. To me, this is, in the words attributed to Edith Wharton, truly being trapped in the thick of thin things. 